actually, I've got a question for you. Certainly. Um, if somebody's absent due to illness, yep. um, can they make up that they can make up their time? They can. Another session. I'm sure. They can. That's right. Important thing here is that we are relying on you, obviously, because you're professional people. We're not going to be rigid enough to say if they don't do it in eight weeks, they don't do it in five hours. They, they can't pass. If there are extenuating circumstances like somebody's ill, or they can't get to the to the session, right? Or for some from some justifiable reason, they're gonna take longer than the eight weeks. They may take eight or nine or ten weeks. As long as you do what you do now, and that is contact WJC or the awarding body and say there's a situation with a particular learner, they're not gonna make the session, or there's been problems in a particular in a particular work based area, which means that we can't complete everything in the eight weeks. That's fine. As long as we got a record of that, we'll accept your professionalism and your judgment. Extra time for people with dyslexia? Yes, extra time as well. Again, if you apply for that, that's fine. If there's a case of, under special circumstances, access arrangements, they still apply. All right? All the usual conditions still apply to the control task. Oh, sorry. Well, you come back to Moy with that one for a second because it depends on the particular center but just to give you some examples right um, secure secure environment could be and one of the plans is that this particular control task will be available via a secure website all right and I'll explain that is in a second which means that the learner can log on do the work present the evidence and log off once they log off it's locked all right that, for our perspective, gives us a record of how long they actually took to produce that, and it means that it's, it's actually then secure. All right? So the, the plan is, unless there's exceptions, is for these things to be done via the secure website. All right? Having said that, if you've got somebody who can't have access to that, all right, um, for one of the things I used to do in the past, I used to um, do a lot of work with the rail industry, which meant that I had a what they call a personal track safety certificate, which meant I could stand on a railway line and do assessment, which was, you know, 125 going past 125 miles an hour was a little bit scary, especially the first time. But common sense had to prevail, right? And that was that if you had a situation like that where there wasn't access to the secure website or the internet or whatever, then as long as you were able to take that piece of work and make sure it was secure, right? So if you had it in a car, once you park your car, you take it out and you make sure it's not left in the car, but it's then securely stored perhaps in your house or whatever, and you make a record of that, that's fine. All right? Again, as long as we know as an awarding body what you're doing, and you tell us, that's fine. All right? But that's an exception, clearly. What we would expect is that these things would be kept under secure conditions if it's in a work base, locked away somewhere, or locked on the secure website. Okay. Yep. Uh, these sessions on the front, so that they relate to individuals rather than groups. They relate to individuals. So if uh, an individual was ill for a week, then yep. you just wouldn't record them on there. No. What? So quite often, it's not an issue whether they've missed the session. No. They can just have an extra one. At the that's end. right. Yeah. Okay. As long as there's a little explanation about that, that's fine. All right. What we want to try and do is to make sure that we have got these secure conditions, but to make sure at the same time to try and reassure you there are exceptions, providing that we know about them and you explain what they are to us in advance or when they happen, if they're you know, circumstances which are unusual. Any other questions before I move on? Yes? need to look at, for example, why they can't complete in the eight hours, right? Is it because they've been ill or they've missed sessions? If there are extra sessions still. Right. What would need to happen there is that you as the, the assessor, right, after a while you start, those alarm bells will start ringing. You start saying, well, this learner is not going to complete this in eight hours. And I would suggest that's where 
perhaps you would go and see your, your IV, your coordinator, to say, Brian Davis, I got him in for level three. It looks like he's not going to complete in eight hours. It looks like there's no other reason, which is exceptional circumstances, why this learner can't complete. What could we do? So it might be a case of the learner's not ready, because as you can see, the last but one bullet point is summative assessments. Right? They can only are taken when the learner and you are satisfied that they have got those skills. Right? So that happens, it may be a case of, right, is this learner working at the right level? Is this learner ready for the assessment? All right? And it's probably at that point, I don't know why you may say, let's stop it, because it's not going to do the candidate any good. Okay? So always look for the reasons behind why that learner can't complete, because you know your learner better than we do. Okay? Any other questions? Now when we're talking about resources, yep. access to resources, yep. are we talking uh, if we provide templates, for instance, for classroom discussions, is that reasonable resources, or we're not giving templates or anything out to help learners? No. Um, there'll be the main, well, we'll have a look now with how the control task is structured in the next session, right? But one of the things which we want to get away from, if you like, uh, or not us so much, but <coughs> Welsh Government, is the idea of templates, right? Uh, what we're looking for instead is the learner taking a certain amount of responsibility for structuring things, right? If it comes though to evidence in a discussion or a talk, you will still need to have a template in order to record that, right? That would be part of the control task itself. But in terms of templates for other parts of the control task, no, no more, no templates, no teaching templates in that sense. This is a summative assessment. By all means, for the teaching learning part, yeah, right? But when it comes to the summative assessment, which is what this is, then no. Do the candidates get the mark scheme? They... That we're using? Right. No. Alright. They will be aware of what they're being assessed against. Right? Now, um... I'm not too sure yet to what extent this is in the public domain. I had this yesterday. Right? This has been produced by uh, Colleges Wales on behalf of Welsh Government and the awarding organisations. It's a rather large document, as you can see. But all the guidance, hopefully, will be in this. And one of the things which has been prepared as part of this document um, is specific <coughs> guidance for the learner. All right? So they'll get the guidance, which will be uh, the, the specifications or the standards. All right? There'll be explanations of what they're expected to do, and also how they're supposed to do it. But there won't be the marking scheme. The marking scheme is, is your domain because you use that to assess them in a summative situation. I'm sorry about the jargon, right? Uh, what you can do when you've gone through the control of the task and you've assessed it is that you can then give feedback at the end, right? Uh, and once you've given them the feedback, based on that, you will be able to talk to them about how they've done. Right. But in terms of the marking scheme, the difference now, because it's a control task, you see the marking scheme, they don't. Okay? And, you know, eight hours over eight weeks, I can see that's going to cause quite a bit of problems, because over that eight week period, you will get one or two students that don't attend the session. So that can be added on. But another thing that springs to mind is that if you only have them for an hour a week, by the time they've got into class and started, then they can't actually fit in eight hours over eight weeks. That will be a center issue I would imagine. Now when I say eight hours, that's a level three. All right, so it's six hours or five hours at the lower levels. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, right. So in terms of manageability, one of the big differences clearly will be that you're going to have more management issues in terms of how do I actually conduct this. So I would imagine, over to Moya. What, um, what some managers are agreeing to do, I know Jackie Tim Peel said he'll do it in real, is and I'll talk to other managers to see if we can do similar things. He's prepared to alter the timetables during the assessment period so that they so that if for example they had I think on one timetable we looked at the learners were meant to be having an hour of AOM, an hour of comms and then two hours of public services. And he said he would collapse that 
timetable for two weeks to give them a four hour slot in one week and then a four hour slot another week or do it two hours, two hours so that he knew that he had that flexibility because as you say they might be in for an hour but it takes them 15 minutes to settle down and get their coats off and stop talking and so you've actually only done 45 minutes of controlled assessment haven't you? So you are then outside of your eight hours. So I'll talk to managers as to how we can manage it for you once you know periods you're going to do assessments and then work-based learning we are we are discussing separately how we handle work-based learning um, the work-based learning managers and myself and the coordinators are meeting to see how we do it for work-based because we appreciate it's very different so um, work-based learning we will deal with separately okay okay thank you Maya okay any other questions yes um, do we have the test or the task? Uh, the, the test. The test. I'll come on to the test in a second. No. Okay, great. Sorry, what about the task? Oh, the task, right. Okay. Um, again, that would depend on, on the centre itself. A couple of things you need to be mindful of, obviously. It's summative assessment. It's only taken when the learner, or, be, or begun, when the learner has mastered those skills to the satisfaction that they've got and you've got all right so the way in which it's planned will depend upon the particular center but in theory without ho hopefully causing any problems with Moya um, in theory it could be done at various times it can be staggered across the organization but that depends on that's how we anticipate it happening that you will manage it within your own area because you know the timetable of your learners so you're so I'm envisaging that if you're delivering an hour a week I wouldn't be expecting anyone to be doing a controlled task before February half term because they've got to have that learning take place first then sit their controlled task to leave them a couple of weeks of, of infill time to prepare for their test um, but that will vary depending on how many hours a week you deliver it for. We're trying to come up with um, some very skeletal schemes of learning for you. They won't be full of activities and resources. They will literally be, if you were delivering AON level two for one hour a week, we would recommend you do these topics in these weeks in order to prepare to start and control task here so that we can give you a bit of guidance on that. They will be out within the next couple of weeks, hopefully, they'll be available on the portal. Can I just ask about the, the, the level that you anticipate they will do? So I've got a majority of mine that are on entry three. They're coming in at entry three level. Um, they've already got an old key skill level one. But um, and then, but on my um, on my course, they should be doing level two. When is it? You know, do I pitch? Are you your work based learning? No. No. Um, How do you, you know to, to get them from an entry three to a level two? Is that is that doable? We normally say they should be working one level above. Mm -hmm. what, yeah, what Estim will say is learners should be working one level above the level that they've been assessed at. But every learner is unique because they've got a GCSE grade that might impact on it. What previous essential skills or key skills have they done? Yeah. Um, at the moment. Um, I'd rather they come to me, although I am being flooded with emails, people are emailing me saying I've got this learner with da da da. I'd rather you email me and we can try and work out what the best solution is because everyone in the room will have a different yeah. scenario. Yeah. Yeah. So just as I, I would, I'm flooded with the emails but I will get back to you within a week because normally I try and get back to you within a day but I'm just getting too many queries at the minute to get back to you um, that quickly but if you're really that stuck come back to me and I'll, I'll say well have you thought about this that or the other because it isn't that we want the whole class all doing level two because that's not appropriate for the individuals they're not all going to be level two are they? And are the proxies the same in terms of GCSE for all levels or are they likely to be different for level one compared to level three? Not sure. I'll have to find out. Okay, do you anything about the proxy? I don't, I don't think there are proxies There's for GCSE. The GCSE grade C? Is it will exempt them from essential skills? Oh, sorry, yeah. What we're saying in college is if the learner's got a GCSE grade C, they don't have to do essential skills. Right. Is that the same for all levels, level one, two, or three? Um, so if they've got a grade C 
Uh, we'd have, to, we'd have to check on that. Yeah. What a great Because a C, a a C would be pitched at around a level two. Yeah. So. And then a, a level three is pitched around, and I say around because it's not a direct math no. qualification, around an AS, isn't it? That's only FE that you took. Yes, yeah, we're based learning, right, just okay. forget everything I've just said, because you have to do what's in the framework. I'm just saying, I've got, got a framework for yeah. 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 so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can just check with Excel if they're resitting? Yeah, what we what we are advising from the skills and curriculum perspective is that if your learners resit in a GCSE, that's their priority. They shouldn't have to do an essential skill as well, because from a from a Welsh government perspective, the, the the GCSE is what they would call the gold standard. So why would we get them to do a GC, an, an ESW as well? They need to focus their concentration on the GCSE. Now, I could be opening a can of worms because different managers may have different opinions. If your managers do have differing opinions on that, let them know that I said something different and they can come and talk to me about it. But I, I would rather not see a learner in a GCSE reset class and in an ESW class because they're doing similar stuff twice, aren't they? When really they want to be in the art room in your, you know, or in the in the studio or something. Just to check on, so if an entire group of students has either already got their maths GCSE at level C or they're doing the research in that year, none of them are doing that in this You will have to take into account their initial assessment result and whether whether you feel those learners need to be up, upping their skills further. Okay. There is one, one rule of thumb would say, well, if they've all got level two, they should be perhaps working towards level three. Sure, but if they've all got the GCSE. If they've got the GCSE. If they are, if they're sk if they're resitting, I wouldn't have them doing the skill as well. If they've got the GCSE, the guidance we've given is that they've they've got that they've they have you know under their own steam without any help they've achieved a C or above at GCSE. We can't take that away from them, can we? If um, and we should be embedding and supporting their learning through their Welsh back challenges if they're on the Welsh back or through their main programme of study if they're on their main programme in their main programme. Of study if they're not on the Welsh back. This might be the wrong place to ask you then, but how, how does it impact the couple hours in the back that there's no work essential skills content? Learners can fluctuate a little bit either side of it. They don't have to all do exactly the same number of hours. It's the program that has to have a certain number of hours. Learners can fluctuate up or down, but the puffle hours does get quite confusing. I appreciate that. Outside of here, if you've got a specific issue you want to call <coughs> with, you can come to me separately about it. I've got a question. Yep. You know, so with GCSE, for example, we, we know the control tasks beforehand yeah. and we can prepare them. Is it going to be the same with this? So, so for example, if, if the text is going to be on fox hunting, can we do some prior learning on terminology and some of the issues around that? Or did it literally open it on the day for tutor and students? Right. You can see beforehand, right, because it'll be on the secure website, which, you'll have, which depending again on what the arrangements are in the college, you'll be able to access to because you will need to be able to prepare for it, right? What we don't want to do is, for I'm not saying doing this, but we don't want to do then is for people to start teaching to the task. That is, that's not on, right? We don't want that to happen. So I know you're not saying that, but it's you. But you've raised an important point, which is they are on the, they, they will be on a secure website. You will be having access to them depending on what the arrangements are for the particular college. You will have the opportunity, particularly with digital literacy, I know this, we're not talking about that, but it's a nice example to use. You have to prepare things for the digital literacy control task in advance, right? clearly. Right? So you will be able to access to it, but what we don't want to see, obviously, is teaching to that particular task. Okay? But you can have access to it to prepare, but the learners don't see it until they get into that room and then start looking at it for the first time. That's what is known as the working period. So you asked a very good question there. Now when the task is going on, because you remind me of something, if the learner wants to clarify something with you or whoever, they can do so. Right? If they don't understand something, they can ask you what it means. What you mustn't do, clearly, is to do the work for them, to answer the question for them. All right? But if they don't quite understand something, or they're not sure of what it means, you or whoever it is can clarify it for them. But what you can't do is cross that line and actually 
give the answer. Will be bilingual. Uh, the tasks will be available in Welsh and English. All right. Um, coming on to that for a second, the salmons will also be. Uh, translated into Welsh. I'm not entirely certain when. Um, we, we think Welsh Government will be doing it, but we need to clarify that amongst ourselves. But they will be translated into Welsh, and the task will be available in Welsh also. Okay? In the eight week period, yep. can students still attend like, extra support for that outside of the class? No. This is a summative test, a summative assessment, right? Once they start, right, they've started. So any additional support that's offered away from the department would have to be postponed? Yeah, because they're actually, what we're saying is, right, I've had this period of teaching learning, right? The learner now, in our opinion, or your opinion, has now mastered the skills at that particular level to do that particular task. The task has started. All right. That's a really good question, Eric. It is a very good that, question. That we'll discuss that outside yeah. of this room because yeah. that impacts on the learners who go up to either a learning centre or somewhere to have um, extra help. We'll, um, we'll have that, that never occurred to me. Yeah. That's a very good question. When they have this this set to them, they know they've got to complete all that in the eight hours or six hours. Yeah. So that when you close it down after two hours, they think, oh, well, I'll go and this well, if, they, if they're going to do that, they're going to do it. We can't stop them. Yeah. What, we, what we can stop or not do is actually teach yeah. what, what's in there. All right? If the learners want to go off and find things out, yeah. they're curious, they're going to find it out. All right? um, but we mustn't actually teach yeah. in between. But you can't stop them attending support sessions for other aspects of their course, can you? If they are having <coughs> help because they're dyslexic or something like that, you can't stop literacy support sessions because they're in the test period. I think we'd have to seek our guidance from yeah. you on that ground. Okay. That's not a lot of them. Oh, there are learners yeah. who do receive that level of yeah. support. If they're going for yeah. assignment support yeah. or something like yeah. that, yeah. it'd be a little yeah. unfair. They won't be being supported directly to the task, yeah. but they're receiving literacy or numeracy support. Well, if it's an overall support they're receiving, which covers goes across very program areas I can't see a problem right but I mean we we'll have to look at it in a bit more detail I think but f from what you've described if it's support which they're going to get anyway as part of their learning that's fine it's not s support which is specific to address in part of that task yeah no so I think that would be okay but I'll have to I'll have to come back to that one but again thank you it's a very good question so good some very good questions coming out actually yes um, or just don't complete and don't get through. Um, can they repeat? Or yeah, they they can do a different task. If they, I will come on to this when we look at the task. I think because it'll hopefully be, become clear. But if a learner doesn't pass the task, you've gone through it and you've done the the assessment and you've worked out your marks and all the rest of it, and they haven't passed, then what then happens is. The quality assurance then starts kicking in. Why didn't they pass? Were they were, were they ready? Is it a case of they working at too high a level? Right. So then that sort of kicks in. But there's no reason why they can't then do a different task at a different time. It could be a lower task. It could be after more teaching, learning, or whatever. But once they take the task, <laughs> and if they don't pass it, they can take another task. It's not one strike and out. They can redo another task. Okay. So they have to redo that. <coughs> redo the whole task from? When it, the only exception is communication. If they've done, for example, they've passed the written part and the reading part, but they haven't passed the discussion or the talk, right? they can redo another task, but only that part, which is the discussion talk. They don't have to redo the reading and the writing. And right. What sort of time period would that be? Have, have you got a split up time period for the discussion? Like if they've done their eight hours and they have to redo, obviously you can't give them another eight hours if you're doing part of it. How are you going to sort of split that up? Good question. Uh, the first thing is that they need to ascertain why didn't they pass. Right? Um, is it because there were deficiencies in what they were doing? Well, clearly there were def deficiencies in the past. But what are the underlying reasons? It may be they need more support. So it might be a case of, right, we'll wait a little while, we'll get you having more support and all the rest of it. Then you can retake that particular a new task, just that aspect of it. That could be in a couple of weeks' time, depending on how much they need to actually upskill that area. 
Okay. But the actual task itself, obviously, you've got, um, you know, there might be the written part, the discussion yeah. part. Say they just failed a written part. Yeah. How much time would you be allowed to give them that out of the eight hours? Good, good question. <coughs> I'll have to find out for you. Thank you. Don't know. I'm being asked that one. Great. <coughs> Can you make a note? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Maya. Okay, some very good questions coming out, right? Some of them hopefully we've answered. There's some ones which have made us think, ah, right. So what will now happen is we've got this meeting now on the 8th to the 9th of October. And what we're going to do is questions which you've asked, which I thought, hmm, we'll raise at that meeting to make sure then that everybody is doing exactly the same thing, which is a nice thing about having these meetings with, with colleagues and other warden organisations. We're all going to agree the same thing. So thank you much indeed. Right? That's a very good question. Because it only happens in comms. It can't happen in any other, this, any other of the skills. If they don't pass aspects of it, they've got to redo the whole task again. Comms is different. But you raised a very good question there about how long have they got to actually do that one part within the eight hours. So, thank you. Yep? How did we, or where do you stand on readers, all the additional support that some of the learners have had if they're doing external online tests and things like that? Okay. That needs to go to Moira in the first instance, and then eventually it'll come through to us because that's an access arrangement. So we need to make sure in advance. What we do now currently, as Moira knows, as, as the principal, is that with the entry qualification, what we say to sentence is, you tell us what the, what the issues are. All right, and what we find is that every learner is different, as, as you know, right? So it might be that what you described there will affect one learner, but not another. So what we need to do is to find out how that's going to affect the learner. You let Moya know, Moya will contact us, we look at it, and we then give you a decision. But the bottom line is, those arrangements are there for the learner. We just need to make sure that we've been fair to them and to other learners as well. Okay? Any other questions? Oh, right. Really, this control test, the whole class is going to have to do it at the same time, aren't they? So some are going to be more ready than others. So that's a good one. Some are going to be more ready than others. That's right, yeah. You're supposed to be given a fair chance, but you can't really have half a class doing a control task and a rest skill building in the same room, can you? Supervised conditions, right? One of the things which mustn't happen, good question again, thank you. It must be in an environment where the learner is not distracted or put off. Right, so you would not have, I would suggest, those who are being taught in the same room or environment as those who are doing the task, because they're going to disrupt it. You'll, you'll have to manage that, yep. that those learners are not in, the, in at the yep. same time. But if you only have one hour a week with them, do we have to hold back and everybody do the control task when they, you know? Just a suggestion, I don't know, if it's, right, what you would, what, just a suggestion, don't know if it's practical or, or if it's uh, feasible. You'd have, you'd be teaching, you'd be doing the skills building of those learners who are not doing the control task, and the ones who are doing the control task would be outside that environment, next door or whatever, and they'd be supervised by a responsible person. You take them outside that environment. So the control task is done like in, in an exam room as well? It's not an exam, well, it's not in an exam room as such, it's in a, in a situation where the learner is not going to be disturbed or is, con or is not conducive to them actually doing what is an assessment. Yeah, right? I, I thought the control task had to be done in our lesson with us supervising. The it, control task can be yeah, done at anyway, any point. Any point. But it doesn't have to be you that supervises it. No. So you would have to manage. So it might be that you and another tutor are both delivering comms, for example, and you have half of one class and a quarter of another class that are, you think are ready to do their assessment. So you'd arrange between you to bring those learners together and then have the other learners separate while those are doing their control task. Perhaps it's how you, you how you manage it. it. Doesn't have to don't have to sit their control task in that hour. It obviously makes sense because that's when their timetable, doesn't it? It's just, it's just having to think in a different way of how, how it's yeah. delivered. But if you're like working in a department where you're just doing all the comms, say, for that department, how would you help us do that? It, it's, we can talk about that outside. Otherwise, yeah. what we'll end up doing is using up all the time to look at everyone's individual methods yeah. of delivery, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we'll, we can talk about the practicalities of it outside because yeah. that's not, with, with respect to Brian, yeah. that's not um, the awarding body's problem, how, how we manage it in that sense. Yeah. But 
Very good question. Yeah, thank you. Right. Can I ask one more question? Yeah. You know you say we can't sort of prompt the learners. I'm just thinking, are the, are the writing topics going to be on the, on a, are the nature of them going to be something that will be applicable to all learners? So, for example, with the GCSE one, it's asking you to describe the first day of the January sales. Now, some males may not be in tune with that whatsoever. So, are we doing a bit of an injustice by not being able to... Will there be enough... There'll be a bank. <laughs> there, there, there will be a bank. We, yeah, we're in the, very good question again. We're the best will in the world, right? We're never going to have enough... The t tasks which are going to be interesting and relevant to everyone, right? So in our case, uh, we're going to have a hopefully have a nice bank of these things, which there'll be something at least that will be of interest, which you can which you can ascertain. I'm not saying you have to do this, but longer down the line, there is the opportunity for you to write your own tasks, right? So which is there now for the current entry qualification. So what you would do is you would take the the basic template of January sales, sake of argument. You would then strip that down, put in your own information relevant to your learners, send it off to WJC as we do now with the entry qualification, we would then yay it or nay it or approve it, once you've done that you can use it. All right? So you can devise your own in the future, I'm not saying you do it now unless you want to, uh, but hopefully there'll be enough of a bank of tasks to at least find something which would be of relevance and of interest to your learners. Yep. The bottom line is is that it's if it, with this instance it's differentiation by task, right? You have to decide with your learners beforehand what level they're working at. All right, so there's, in that sense, there's no leeway. It's what they're what they're working at, in your opinion and their opinion. Are students able to choose the tasks? No. So it's summative. The yeah, they can't see the task. That's right. They can't see this. They can't see the task until they're ready. All right. So you can look at the range, the bank of tasks, or whoever's got permission to look at the bank of tasks, and then you can decide. Then, as your colleague just asked or intimated, you can decide which one you, they think you or you think is most suitable. All right, Tina. Sorry, just going on from that. Yeah. So we get to choose from the bank. Yeah. Of tasks yeah. which we think is most appropriate yeah. to our students. Yeah. Can we give different tasks or do everyone in no. the group you get can, one? You can you can have a situation where um, um, this is extreme, I don't know how we'll fit in, but this is extreme except thing. I was one of the first people to sit the multiple choice driving tests, but too early to actually do it online. So there were 10 of us in Merthyr, and we all got different papers in the same room. I'm not saying that everybody gets a different paper, 10, but there is a potential there to use different tasks with different learners, but in the same control environment. All right? Okay, thank you. Um, anybody else? How big is the bank of tasks likely to be? Ooh. Are they likely to use the same one over and over? No. No. I mean, at first, I mean, that's, this is one of the things that we're trying to do now in, in October, is to, because what we've done, we've, we've divvied out to different awarding organisations what tasks they will, what areas they will do to start with, just to make sure we've got enough there to, to start with. And then after that, the process, after the beginning of October, the process will start in earnest to start start writing more and more and more of these so there'll be more and more tasks going into the bank so over time it'll start getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so right. the idea that it can match say like you know because art it would match yeah yeah our yeah i mean the, the, the other thing of course is we have to write tasks which are accessible to everyone so if we say right we're going to write an engineering task we can't make it so specific that the only person who answer is an engineer right we need to make it the context is engineering which might be interesting, hopefully, to your engineers, but it has to be written in such a way that it's accessible to all learners. Okay, but the idea is we'll have a, a I won't say vast, <laughs> we'll have a nice big bank of these tasks. But if I say like this task, can I continue to use it with each successive group, or is there limited yeah, to no, time no. to use it? Yeah, no, no. As long as you don't use the same task more than once with the same learner. So you can carry on using the same task, but with different classes, different groups, different apprentices, whatever, providing you don't use the same one more than once with the same le learner. Is this bank set up already? For uh, no, not yet. Not yet. The Any idea of kind of... What we're aiming for, aiming, right, what we're aiming for is that the first tasks will sort of, in inverted commas, go live 
sort of November this year, right? But the bottom line is, before everybody rushes, it's summative, you know, and it depends on how the college wants to operate it. I mean, to start with, these are the first time that these things are going to be used. So there's going to be a, there will be an, a start date, and we'll say, right, we need to get these things up and running. Once time moves on, it'll start running along, and things be nice and smooth. But to start with, it's going to take a little bit of, a little bit of time. But we're aiming for November to get the first live ones up there. Okay. Don't hold me that, mind you. <laughs> November, definitely. Right, sorry. With the, um, the discussion part of communication, yeah. it to be the same topic also. Could that, so you'll be could we, have ten different... No, that's right. If I tell you what, we'll come back to that question when we start looking at comms, because right? you can then look at the actual sample assessment material, and if you feel the answer's not from looking at it, ask me again then. Okay? Right, how are we doing? Any other questions? Have I worn you out? Ah, oh, no. Yeah, come on. The evidence that produce it, is it, can it be electronic? Or it yes, definitely. I'm a big fan of that. The idea is, is that we want to try and get away as much as possible from loads and loads of paper. All right? I mean, oh, writing communication, you have to have paper, I suppose. But what we're trying to do is to make sure that we're going to have um, access to Kernel, to Moodle, to a secure website, whatever, so the learner is able to upload evidence so it's not just right, writing. Delete it off the local drive, for example, so we can't work on it. Yeah, it have to. Yeah, it would have to be stored on whatever. So I mean, the idea could be WJC's kind of Moodle could be a, a venue for that, could be a hosting area, and that sort of approach, obviously, from our perspective, is good because it's, it's locked and we've got a record of different sessions and how long it takes and all the rest of it. But yeah, the big big drive, quite rightly, is away from just paper for the sake of it. We could we could still print it out though. Oh I yeah. Some, some oh yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't just store security, but if you want to print it out and you're happy to do that, that's fine. So that with the presentation, they would have to upload that. You'd like to see, say, what the... Uh, we, we, we'd like to, but, you know, I mean, if it's a, if it's a case of, you know, I'm being videoed here now, if it's a case of that's Why not suitable... It, it yeah. Be yeah. All right. Um, and again, with the comms, we'll come on to um, work-based, and what happens if you've got people in different areas and they're taking part in discussions remotely, we'll come on to that one with communication later on. Anybody else? Something. Oh, right, Are we going to have training on that then beforehand? Yeah, yeah. That's one of the things which we'll depending on what sort of training it is. But one of the things we, we'll work out, obviously, with, with Moya is what are the training needs over the next couple of months, and that's part of the quality assurance checks that we'll be doing to make sure that everything's going okay. So, depending on what training is identified, Moya will say, well, that's something we could do in house, or that's something perhaps WJC could come and do. So, yeah, that's something which we'll need to discuss with Moya because training is very important and there, there, I know there's lots of organisations who deliver training it's making sure who are the, who are the most appropriate people to do the training. There will be elements within the AOM that they're actually handwriting some calculations yeah. and we're going to work those for those. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, good question. Right, how are we doing? I'm conscious of the time. Um, yeah, right. I, right, anything else on the control task? <laughs> Right? <laughs> it, I know, right. Uh, with a control task, right, you can now ask more questions when we start looking at the control task, alright? So hopefully things will start making sense or not making sense. Right, I'll come back to the task later on when we look at the examples.